Now it's time for movie time with Chet Wilson. A lot of criticism has been said about the blockbuster John Carter, but after you hear my review, you'll understand why I think this film will be regarded as one of the greatest of all time, much like George W. Bush's presidency. If the title alone didn't grab your attention, then the all-star cast surely will. First, Taylor Kitsch of Snakes on a Plane fame plays our hero, John Carter. Second, star of the short-lived television series Haunted, Lynn Collins plays Princess Deja Thoris. And last, Willem Dafoe, best known for his unforgettable role as Willie in Heaven's Gate, now lends his voice of Tars Tarkas, the King of the Martians. My love for this film truly derives from the story. John Carter, the movie, is based on the first book in the fictional Barassoom series of novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs entitled A Princess of Mars. And if we've learned anything from Hollywood, novels make great movies, even fictional ones. John Carter is your typical Civil War veteran mining for gold and silver when he's ambushed by Indians, I mean Native Americans. While hiding in a cave, he comes upon an amulet that transports him to Mars, much like the Triwizard Cup from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. On Mars, he can jump incredible heights and breathe carbon dioxide rich air. Clearly, he is Superman of Mars. But like all great epics, the plot is thick. A villain by the name of Saab Thon terrorizes the Earthlings of Mars, flying from village to village, creating havoc. Thon, king of Zadunga, kills the human beings and hopes to rule the red Martian cities. The only solution to this war is peace, in the form of a peaceful arranged marriage of Dejah Thoris and Thon. Like most women, she has daddy issues and refuses the proposal. In an aerial battle, Deja is being chased down by Thon, a la Star Wars A New Hope. John Carter witnesses this fight and uses his incredible new powers to leap up and save Deja. Immediately, she is smitten. Yet, Carter's only agenda is to get back to Earth. Now that Deja owes Carter a life debt, she agrees to help the man. John Carter, Deja, and one of the scary looking alien creatures that Defoe belongs to, make a pilgrimage to the Holy of Holies on Mars, a Martian sphere at the end of the river, which kind of reminds me of the movie Sphere. Unfortunately, the trio is captured before they can utilize the full power of Carter's magical stone. Chained and defeated, Deja agrees to marry the evil king if they spare the life of Carter and the green alien. Realizing his mistake in giving up Deja, Carter starts a mutiny amongst the green aliens, killing their leader and becoming their king. He leads them into battle to rescue the Princess Bride, disrupting the ceremony just in time, much like the Princess Bride. Carter saves the day, defeats the evil king, and marries Deja, wrapping up John Carter in a fine little package. And just as he's about to take advantage of this institution called marriage, he's transported back to the cave on Earth. This can only mean there's a sequel in the works. Brilliant. As I close this theatrical review, I consider all the Mars films that came before, like Mission to Mars, Red Planet, and Rocket Man, and I wholly believe they don't hold a candle to John Carter. In my opinion, it was worth every penny of the 300 million to make.